One of our priorities today is to work with FEMA and the local recovery team to get information out to those that have been evacuated as quickly as possible on the next steps for them. The Disaster Recovery Center will fully be, be fully operational tomorrow down in Loveland. There'll be information available in the shelters and we'll be pushing that information out through our Joint Information Center on the details of what services are provided down there, et cetera. So that's gonna be a, a big focus for us. In addition, obviously, uh, uh, the number one priority is the life safety component and continue to get people out of the, uh, the areas to be evacuated. At this point, we've tabulated at least 1,041 people have been evacuated, all told. That's not just air, but that's ground evacuations, et cetera, since the incident started. I would guess that number's low because when I was out there on the, the early hours of this, and that's a time when you're asking people to evacuate. You don't check them off the list or anything. It's a very rapid process, but at least 1,041 that we've accounted for that have been evacuated, uh, both by air and, uh, and by ground. Uh, at this point, uh, the number for yesterday that was evacuated by air is 420 people, and uh, we are now down to 197 unaccounted for. And that is, again, the process of going through the list of those that uh, we just haven't confirmed their whereabouts and confirming where they are. So we're really encouraging anybody who's out there who's been evacuated to go to the safeandwell.org website and register there. Uh, also, if somebody is a loved one of somebody they haven't been in contact with, register that there too so we know that they're looking for somebody and we can cross-reference that and attempt to locate them. Our hope is obviously to bring that number down quite a quite a bit and uh, and get that down to a much much smaller number. Um, the other number for information is our Joint Information Center at 970-498-5500. And those that aren't able to or don't want to log on to that website can also use that uh, that phone number and make direct contact. That's staffed 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sheriff Smith to talk a little bit about the evacuations and what he saw out there uh, yesterday at Crispin Field. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Justin Smith, Larimer County Sheriff, J-U-S-T-I-N-S-M-I-T-H. Yeah, I wanted to give you kind of a recap of what it really looked like out there. Uh, we had the morning briefing this morning and, and got the numbers that Nick talked about on you know, who's down, who's coming down, the aircraft that are up there. Um, those are certainly important, but the most important is what the mission really is at this point is focused on getting the folks off the mountain, getting them down safely. And uh, we had a reminder with everyone out there for every little part they're doing, they are. We're, we're accomplishing that. I spent about three hours yesterday um, out, at the, uh, out at the air base and was able to talk to people as they came off, get an idea where they were coming down from and what those areas were like, what they saw behind. And I can tell you it was huge. Uh, to be honest, I expected to see a lot more frustration and feel it with folks. You know, they've been up there since Wednesday or Thursday uh, without ability to come down, many of them without water, uh, very limited on food. Uh, overall, it was just amazing. It spoke to the spirit of the folks that live here. Um, they, ha they were in good spirits. Actually, not as many weak that I, as I would expect, I expect to see more of them really having problems getting off the craft. There were a few, but most of them just had one heck of a smile on their face. Um, they, they came down with their pets, they came down, you know, a lot of them with a suitcase, etc. cetera. Um, and how that was going on, it wasn't just getting them down. Part of what's important is taking care of them when they get here. And I can tell you, if, uh, if the folks on the commercial airlines could do as well as those crews do out there, grabbing bags, getting pets, escorting folks, getting them back. Uh, just an example, Humane Society is there, and as soon as those animals are back on the ground, there's food, there's water, there's veterinarians tending to them, and I can tell you that makes a huge difference for folks. A lot of them were really concerned about the pets that were with them and the ability to tend to them. So as they got down, um, things were good. They're getting them off to shelters. Um, I had somebody ask me how big the number at the shelter was. I don't know what it is because I believe that's pretty fluid and that's because let's face it most of these folks are not strangers they may live 20 miles away but they work and they have friends down here the vast majority of people coming to the shelters within hours are being dispersed to friends houses and so they're actually going to spend time there and, and not pushed in the shelter they may show up to you know for information so that's certainly helpful as well to get some sense of normalcy out there so those kind of operations are going on 
Um, what was helpful to me was to talk to some firefighters that came out of Big Thompson Canyon. Uh, uh, one of them was a Loveland firefighter who had gotten partway up the canyon and gotten stranded and he was tending to folks while he was up there. Uh, at least two or three more were actually Big Thompson Canyon fire personnel. So I got an idea of them, what it looked like on the ground. Um, I can tell you, it gave me more confidence in my feeling that, yes, we have more deaths up there, I understand that, but confidence that it's not going to be the kind of numbers that we saw in 1976. And I say that because of, we know about the notifications that came out, but also the feel from folks was that most people knew it was coming. Um, I had a gentleman talk about once those waters got there, being able to get up the hillside because they, they had an idea it was coming. So certainly there's a sense of some optimism, certainly much more optimism given the weather. The sunshine that I'm fighting today um, is exactly what we need. It's drying things out. The waters are coming down. Um, so those aircraft, as you know, just continue to fly, actually to the point that the issue they have now is saturation of the airspace. There's only so much with one landing zone and all these aircraft that you can safely put up. So we're not in a point of saying we need more aircraft. Uh, they're balancing what's out there. Let's keep them flying safely up there. We're definitely seeing that. The other part that is important is that these search and rescue teams that are a combination of USAR folks and, and my staff and others, they're in the field. They're going structure by structure. First thing that's doing is getting confirmations on who has been taken out what structures have been cleared for, for injuries or damage, um, documenting those who continue to shelter in place. Uh, and just to be clear, we don't forcibly remove those folks that are out there um, in their home safely. Uh, we make note where they're at so we, we know in the future. We encourage them to come out because of what's going on. Um, so we've got those things going on. And that should help us to report back the numbers that, that uh, the FEMA folks need, that we need, that the citizens need of what that numbers look like on structures that are damaged, destroyed, or just you know completely wiped off. So those things are happening at the same time. A lot of progress there. A lot of those uh, troops stayed in the field. They're the ones that they're when they sent out, they send them out with 72 hours worth of provisions um, because they, ne they know they may be stuck out there and it's easier to leave. They'd prefer to stay in the field. That way they can work up till the end. And as soon as they're up, they're back to work. Um, additionally, uh, we're getting word of resources being moved into the Estes Park area. Uh, some of that's because these crews, the Estes Park base crews, fire department, police department, um, my staff up there, uh, Pooter, or excuse me, uh, Glen Haven Fire, their folks, they, they've hit the wall. They've been going for a week straight. So we're getting some guard troops up there to alleviate um, that a little bit, give them a chance to rest and recoup a bit. So a lot of good pieces happening there. Um, with that, I, I just express that uh, the people come out, all in all, were, were uh, appreciative. They were thankful to be back on the ground, and uh, they're looking forward to a brighter tomorrow and seeing their friends and neighbors come out. Thank you. The sheriff, I'm Chuck Russell, Rocky Mountain Team A, Deputy IC, C-H-U-C-K, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -L. The sheriff covered a lot of what got accomplished yesterday operationally. Uh, we did have quite a few people on the ground yesterday, and, and as he mentioned, the aviation assets were, were going nonstop as soon as we've got, got the sunshine and those, those low clouds lifted. We were able to get into a lot of those communities. We, the first load of people were our USAR groups that went in, that interagency coordinated effort. Uh, we got those folks on the ground, and they started organizing uh, the evacuation so that it was, it was done in a uh, orderly fashion and, and it, it, it went as smooth as it could go. Uh, so yesterday was a great day. We did leave, as was mentioned, the folks on the ground out there so that uh, they're ready to get up and get after it again this morning. So the plan for today is to continue to do what we did yesterday and that's uh, utilize those aviation assets, utilize the folks on the ground and, and from here on out it's going to be a little bit more meticulous how we go about this. It's going to be getting up into those areas that uh, are a lot more isolated than, than the bigger areas. Uh, we are going to start looking at our aircraft and the, comp comp the composition of our aircraft that we're utilizing. Uh, those big ones were great for landing in those large meadows. We're going to have to start looking at, at uh, right sizing our organization to get the aircraft that we need that are more effective for those individuals that are left to get out uh, of those communities. So we'll be looking at some smaller aircraft 
a uh, little more pinpoint insertions than what we've been doing and uh, that effort will continue to, to go on today and, and into the days to come. Uh, we're happy with the amount of people uh, that we've been finding and happy with uh, the shape that they're all in and uh, that's a, a big positive from yesterday. Thank you. We'll uh, take a few questions at this point. Any idea how many people are deciding to stay up there? I don't know that we have any specifics on that at this point. Uh, we're certainly not encouraging that. One thing that uh, we need to emphasize is if they're contacted and asked to evacuate and they decline, they may not get that opportunity again in the near future. And with the magnitude of this, a lot of the roadways are cut off, and so it'll be very difficult for them to get supplies in and that sort of thing. And, and we won't keep resupplying those areas once, uh, once this operation has wound down. So we're strongly encouraging those that are asked to evacuate to go ahead and do so. But I don't have a number on how many may have uh, chosen not to. Rough estimates, hundreds, thousands? I don't know at this point. It certainly wouldn't be thousands, but uh, probably not even hundreds, hopefully. Most people are pretty cooperative with this and understand the magnitude of it. Well, we had uh, about 1,000 yesterday that we estimated needed to be evacuated. We, we evacuated 420, so uh, you know, 600, 580 approximately. Those are approximate numbers, and as Chuck said, we'll be probing some of the more remote areas and making contact with some of those folks. So it's going to be a slow, methodical process to finish the last of the evacuations. Are those Larimer numbers, or is that Boulder as This well? is just Larimer County okay. numbers that I'm providing. Sheriff, you posted a little bit about your son, Taylor. Can you talk a little bit about that? You bet. Uh, uh, we got a son to the National Guard, and uh, he was eagerly awaiting his opportunity to be a, a part of this effort. And uh, he got his call from he had to drive to Alamosa to uh, to get put together. And I don't know whether he's going to be back in Larimer County, um, serving the citizens here, or you know serving anywhere else in the state between Boulder and, and areas east. So it's a family thing for us. And uh, his mother and I are. Certainly very proud to see him out there as well. So. Was he ready to get his boots on the ground? <laughs> I think re ready is an understatement. And you've posted a lot about how it's taken a toll on you. Can you just speak about that a little bit? Well, you know, more, I, I'm just uh, uh, overwhelmed by the way things are coming together. And on one, on one level, it's my staff coming together. But these folks you see around me, and the hundreds, if not thousand more that are in the field, um, wow, you know, and once again, they're coming. I've had a chance to, to shake hands with people from uh, LA Fire, from Clark County, Nevada, from Boone County, Missouri, from plenty of other places. These USAR teams coming out, and uh, it, it really is family as they come together. And there's no doubt in my mind, it wouldn't matter if they were across the street from their own house or they're in remote Larimer County, Colorado. Their commitment and dedication is the same. Uh, same thing with all these guard troops, whether they're Colorado Guard, Wyoming Guard, you know, actual um, uh, Army troops that are brought in from Fort Carson. I can tell you the spirit of these folks is just tremendous. Um, the other parts that come in, and, and I, I want to make sure we don't move past these too quick, is while we are doing rescue and recovery of people out of the field, at the same time, we have the utility folks out there roads, electricity, telephone. I can't say, I can't begin to say enough about the work of those folks. They're in the same conditions that these responders, the police and fire folks are in, as they're out getting poles strung back up, as they're trying to get enough of a road together we can get emergency vehicles across. Their ded dedication is just amazing. Um, and I definitely have to say the same for the phone people that are out there, uh, whether it was the, the CenturyLink people coming out, uh, working essentially my understanding is Estes Park was maintained by fiber that ran up Highway 34. That's gone. I mean the big chunks of that are gone. They've essentially totally rebuilt that and I just got off the phone with the 911 director shortly before I got here and she said for practical purposes for users up there the phone system is back at now to what it, it's routed a whole different way but it's working functionally for folks up there. Same thing with the, the cellular service um, AT&T and Verizon have done an outstanding job with their emergency response folks getting that stuff back up and going as well. So um, it's overwhelming to see that, but uh, those things are important. And the other thing that I'll stress is uh, I was down right before this with the Board of County Commissioners. 
and we're having the discussions while we're looking at getting people out of out of those areas right now we have planners and we're working on the issues of long term we have a new normal in Larimer County for months if not a few years out there and we have to plan those things as well those include how we continue to provide emergency services to areas with no roads how we can get deputies in how we can we can do our best to protect properties that are up there where the owners can't get back um, be able to patrol we're looking at those kind of issues at the same time uh, I know all of you have heard stories from people trapped on Storm Mountain that you know, it's a new time, it's a new world because they're Facebooking and emailing out when they couldn't get on a phone about being blocked on a road. We've dealt with that issue for egress, but we also recognize there's hundreds of homes on Storm Mountain and we're going to need to work with everybody involved to figure out how those are supported.